Shalom, Shalom. First and foremost, I'd like to give all praises, all honor, and glory to the Heavenly Father, Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai, Bahasham Makar Kodash, that will honor to the apostles and the elders that do rule well and great millstone. Peace and salutation to the Akia Mother pushing this gospel in sincerity and truth. Say Shalom to the humble and sincere sisters out there as well. This is the Barak Kalam. Come back at you again with another lesson entitled Looks Could Be Deceiving. Right, and this would be, you know, twofold, right, where we'd be, I'll bring out a couple precepts, you know, this would be a long video, a couple precepts on the woman, you know, to be, to be vigilant, to be sober-minded, to be aware when it comes to, you know, dealing with women, and, you know, also, you know, in, in terms of doctrines and philosophies and, and the things of this world right they may look beautiful you know um there was a time on 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 tiktok where islam was a trend it was trendy to be a muslim and what they what they would use right they would use their nasheeds i believe that's the word which is basically the religious music they would use their music and and and, and the sounds Right, the instruments, they were beautiful instruments, you know, beautiful melodies. Right? And this would woo the hearts of men and women, right? They would use the, the these this music, they would use the uh the mosques, right, the beautiful mosques, you know. Certain messages that they that they would teach, you know, because uh plenty of of Islamic teachings not plenty but a couple you know it it aligns with that of biblical of biblical teaching you know so they, they use it and 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 tiktok for some reason push this in its um uh, in its in its feed everybody wanted to become muslim it it, it attracted them right they did it was more than it being true or false, right? And then on top of that, it, it, it probably felt true to them because of how it looked. They looked at the, the garments that the women wore, the garments that the men wore, the jewelry, the music, the mosques, the nature of it. It looked beautiful, right? It looked beautiful. You know? And then um recently uh, I realized Hinduism, right? It was it didn't being pushed as much as the Islam was, but the Hinduism, um, the Wali was the other day. Uh, you know, certain videos came up on on my TikTok, and you go into the comments and you read and you realize it's it, it intrigued people. The fireworks, the deers, again the garments, the beautiful women, right? All these things intrigue. People. beauty attract and it is only natural it is only natural living things are attracted to beauty right the reason why we love the sun and the moon and the stars and we, we stare at these things you know some some even going so far as to worship them and call them God we look at the animals they are beautiful right in so much as people worship them as gods fire and, and water and earth right lightning and thunder and, and all all the things of this world and around it and in it right people worship them as, as gods because of their beauty right because of their beauty we see men worship women Right, you get into that as well. Human humans are attracted to beautiful things. We are attracted to things that bring us pleasure. Right? You look into the animal world, a lot of plants, a lot of poisonous plants have the most vibrant colours which are which will attract insects to eat them and die. A lot of animals as um, that are very poisonous tend to have again beautiful vibrant colors and when the the predator bites them 
it dies right all these things are defense mechanisms you know of, of, of nature right so we could take this this example we could take this and, and realize and, and, and put it to use in terms of women in terms of, of doctrine and philosophy and, and, and teachings not because something looks good mean that it is good we realize that the the healthiest things on this earth to eat are bitter you know they're bitter right herbs which is medicine which is good for you is bitter and, and sweets and snacks that are, are poisonous to you um, are colorful and and very sweet to the point where as soon as a snack or whatever processed food touches your mouth whatever from crazy wood like fried food you know the term Anyways, like fried food, you know, KFC, Burger King, and all these things. When that touch your mouth, your body begins to produce so much insulin in the saliva, right? Your mouth begins to produce so much saliva, you know, because of the sugar, because of the, the, the taste. It becomes very highly addictive but the herbs now <laughs> that's a different story you have to force to eat the herbs you understand you have to force yourself to not vomit yes you know you have to force yourself to eat this medicine medicine which is good for you but the thing that is bad for you your body accepts it freely the same way you have to force yourself to exercise and go to the gym and be healthy you don't have to force yourself to lie down all day and be lazy because your body this body is designed to go after weak things go after evil things go after vanity that is basically what this body is designed to do but the spirit in the body is what fights against it against it and, and causes it to, to, to do what it wants right but you know let me get into this, this is the book of Sirach chapter 9 verse um Momo. Salakia. Right, verse eight. Turn away thine eye from a beautiful woman and look not upon another's beauty for many have been deceived by the beauty of a woman for here with love is kindled as a fire right we hear that love love burns you know at that term you know um they say the reason why you say fall in love because there's a falling process where you submit yourself you give up yourself to this person you give your strength unto them Right? They become your priority, they become your heartbeat, you know, you fall. You don't rise just yet. Right? You must first fall in love with them. And again, you subjugate yourself unto them. And the Bible teaches us in the book of Proverbs, chapter thirty one, verse three. Give not thy strength unto women, nor thy ways to that which destroyeth kings. So the Bible shows us not to give our strength unto these women not to submit yourselves unto them not to do as samson did not to do as king david did where he gave his strength unto that woman right he he, he, he forgot his power he forgot he forgot the laws of his power he forgot his men right he, he murdered not only the her husband but all the men that he sent out there to fight a losing battle just so that he could have sex with her he murdered them all right as a leader of a nation as the king of a nation he became the lowest man in that moment in that he sent forth the people that he was made to rule to die by the hands of the heathen right he became very filthy and wicked in that moment 
Do not as, as his sons King Solomon did. Give not thy strength unto these women, and forget your Lord. Right? Do not as Adam did. Right? Who was not deceived, but still received. Right? Because of love. And now, sure, Eve was the one that was deceived, but Eve was the weaker vessel. Adam, being the son of the Lord, should have known better. Being this the so-called stronger vessel, he should have, you know. But again, everything is up to the the, the script of the Lord, you know. Right, the motion of the Lord is in all things, and the Lord wanted it to go that way, so that's the way it went. But Adam knew that what Eve was speaking of was rubbish. Yet he still ate out of that, ate out of that garbage bin, all in the name of what love. All because he loved. You understand? So he's as guilty as she is. If she fell by deception. And he fell by a different type of deception. Be in love. Right? There's something that a term it says love is blind. You know? As if as if being blind is a good thing. You know? As if being blind is a blessing. You see, love is blind. Right, and it, that's why you tend to miss a lot of red flags with these women in the early because you can't see the impurity, you know. So the Bible says, Give not thy strength unto these women, retain thine strength and give it to Abashim El Shai, love the Lord with all thy heart and thy soul and thy might. Right, look not upon the beauty of these women because women are beautiful, gorgeous creatures, you know. The Lord made them in that manner. And there's not just one nation that have nice women. All nations under the sun have have good looking women. You know, of, of the Israelites. Or you know, of Jake women, you know, Northern and Southern Kingdom, of Elam, of, of Esau, of Ammon and, and Moab, of the Ishmaelite women, you know, the the Ethiopian so like the the Ham Hametic, you know, well some of them. Some of them, you know. So, you need you need to gain some form of control, you know. And as for the people in the world, in terms of religion, you know, because my master that this video is twofold. Things may look good for food, just as Eve thought, but that doesn't mean that it is good. Not because something feels good means that it is the right thing. The truth is not about feelings. The truth is not about how you perceive it or how it makes you feel. Truth is truth. You understand? Whether you can accept it and live with it or not, but the truth is the truth. That is all, that is all it is. You understand? Because some man may love the truth and some man may hate the truth. You know? Some man may fear the truth, and some may not care of it. So there's many perceptions of the truth, but the truth still stands. It it is fixed, right? But as for these religions, these religions are governed upon how it makes a man feel. Right? You feel the spirit and you think it's the spirit because you, you get excited, you get overwhelmed by, by emotion and all these things, you, you know? And you tell yourself, alright, this has to be the truth. Look, how, look at how it makes me feel. Right? Or you might look at Islam or, or Hinduism or Krishna, any religion, Judaism, and you might look at it and it looks good. You understand? It looks good. The way they dress, the way they speak, their music, their ceremonies, their, you know, their practices and their customs. It looks good. Alright? Or the language, the language that they speak, it may sound, you know, it may sound good. But that does not mean it is good. Again, you cannot deny that certain foods truly are... Um, enticing fast food right that's the word i was looking for the term 
fast food is enticing and it does in fact taste good but after it is digested and it gets into the body what do you think happens does it benefit the body does it help the body or does it damage the system right because beautiful things are not always again i'll keep saying it beautiful things are not always good for you right this is the book of fusas chapter 4 Verse 18, it said, Yea, ye, and if men have gathered together gold and silver, or any other goodly thing, do they not love a woman which is comely in favor and beauty? And letting all those things go, do they not gape, and even with open mouth fix their eyes fast on her? And have not all men more desire unto her than unto silver or gold, or any goodly thing whatsoever? A man leaveth his own father that brought him up, and his own country, and cleaveth unto his wife. He sticketh not to spend his life with his wife, and remembereth neither father nor mother nor country. By this also ye must know that women have dominion over you. Do ye not labor and toil, and give and bring all to the woman? Yea, a man taketh his sword, and goeth his way to rub and to steal, to sail upon the sea and upon rivers. And looked upon a lion and, and goeth in the darkness, and when he hath stolen, spoiled, and robbed, he bringeth it to his love. Wherefore a man loveth his wife better than father or mother. Yea, many there be that have run out of their wits for women and become servants for their sakes. Many also have perished, have erred, and sinned for women. Uh, I'll read this as well. It says, and now do you not believe me? Is not the king great in his power? Do not all regions fear to touch him? Yet did I see him on a palmy, the king's concubine, the daughter of the admirable Barticus, sitting at the right hand of the king, and taking the crown from the king's head, and setting it upon her own head. She also struck the king with her left hand. And yet for all this the king gaped and gazed upon her with open mouth. If she laughed upon him, he laughed. But if she sh took any displeasure, the king was fain to flatter that she might be reconciled to him again. Reconciled to him again. Right, so we see here that men live their lives for the sake of, of the woman, of, of women. And this is true. And you know why it is true? Because strong was made for weak. Strong vessels was made for the weaker vessels. This is a natural thing. A man is the one that goes out and he works and he toils hard, right? He goes and he works to what? To provide for who? Himself? No, he does it to provide for his family. A man will put his life on the line for what? His family. A man will go and war and fight and die for to, in protecting who? His family. He will put his life on the line. He would give them his very last. He will give them his last drop of water and go without because it is for his family. The same way how shy is our head and he had died for us. Understand? And he gave everything for us because it is natural that the stronger would help the weaker. Men will help women in this manner because they are the stronger vessels. Right? We see Jacob our forefather serving 14 years for a woman 14 years all because he loved her right you see samson fallen by the philistine woman david and solomon and adam right it it <laughs> it's even among these righteous men among our holy forefathers that you know we take example from we see they themselves right fell for woman's sake and jacob didn't necessarily fall but look at what he done in the name of love in some and we know it was the the obedience of the lord but at the end of the day jacob still did it in his head 14 years for her right and even after that we see that 
the children that Jacob loved the most was who? Joseph and Benjamin. And why did he love them the most? Because they were Rachel's sons. Right? They were Rachel's children. And that is what made him love the both of them more than his other children. All in the name of this love. Right? Do not allow yourselves to be beguiled, to be tricked, and to be deceived by these things. But rather give all unto Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai. Do not allow these women to to, to, um, to enter your mind. Right, I'll close with in Sirach 25, 21. Stumble not at the beauty of a woman and desire her not for pleasure. Do not desire her for pleasure. Do not stumble at her beauty. Right? Do not allow a woman to, to throw you off your game. Right? And stress you out and, and, and you know, focus, lock in. You understand? Time to lock, time to lock in. Don't allow these women, don't allow nothing of this world to come between the love of Yahweh that is in Yahweh Shai. Let nothing separate us from the love of Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai. Right? The eyes, the eyes will desire beautiful pictures, you know, the ears will desire beautiful sounds. Right? The tongue will desire savory meats and tastes. And it's the, the, the nose will desire, you know, wonderful aromas and scents. You know, the, the hands and the skin will desire pleasant, soft things to, to feel and to touch. Right? And then the heart, the, this fleshly heart, you know, will desire, will desire love. But let the spirit reign over these desires and these wants. And let the spirit yearn and desire the true desire, which is to serve Yahweh Bashem Yahushai, and let it be triumphant over all these other minuscule, vain things. And with that, I hope this was edifying. All praises to Yahweh Bashem Yahushai, Bashem Shalom.